Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life and welcome to another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. This week, we're gonna kick it way back and start right at the beginning, some of the fundamentals and the foundations of setting up a well-equipped shop. And this is a tool that is equally as useful to an expert, somebody who's just fantastic in their field, as it is to somebody who's just starting out and just learning and, and doing some of the stuff for the first time. Also, it's a tool that is universally useful across so many different trades, whether it be woodworking, metalworking, uh, knife making, uh, hobbying, or crafting, and even just general repairs. Uh, we're talking about the bench vise, and I really don't think there's all that many people that argue that a bench vise is one of the tools that you should be considering purchasing early as you're establishing your toolkit. So we're going to take a look at a few things to consider if you don't have a bench vise, and if you're looking to buy one, and uh, just go through a couple different things for those of you that might not know. But before we get to that, let's take a look at some viewer knives. The first knife we're going to take a look at this week is actually Knife in Progress. And this was sent to me by Paul from Ireland. And he is making a knife and he's using the file guide method. And this, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to get into knife making because it is less expensive. There's not a huge investment in equipment and the results are just fantastic. So, Paul, excellent work on those bevels. That is coming out really nice and clean. And I hope you'd send me a picture of this knife when it's completed so we can take a look at that too. Really great work. Keep it up. And for those of you that would like more information on the file guide method, Check the description box below. I'll put links to the videos that I have on that and really a super awesome way to get into knife making. Next we have JH from Denmark. Now he'd sent me several pictures of some knives that he had made and beyond just the incredibly uh, well finished, the fit and finish on his blades are excellent but above and beyond that he's got all these extra customizations and decorative work with the etching that really make these blades stand out. You know putting things like this into a knife is a huge amount of work and just very well done, very nice looking blades and I especially like this third one how the logo on the blade matches that logo on this sheath. Just super classy just exhibits great craftsmanship. Thank you for sharing that with us. And last but certainly not least, these two knives were sent to me by Brian. And Brian, I'm not sure if he's a professional maker or a hobby maker, but really great looking blades here. I really like the stone acid wash finish on this first blade. And also his use of two tone scale materials is just really classy. Uh, you know, you take the two scales and you kind of glue them together and just adds an extra level of class and, and design sophistication to the blade. So fantastic looking blades, everybody. Thank you so much for sending them in. And again, if you'd like to have your knives shown on Tool Time Tuesday, uh, just email me jeremy at homesteadknives.com and I will get those put up. Oops, I almost forgot. There's one last order of business to take care of. Uh, if you remember on the last video I uploaded, I had a contest to win a t-shirt and you just leave a comment on that video. Right before I came out here, I randomly selected a winner and David Postmus is the winner of the t-shirt. So David, just get in contact with me and I'll get your mailing information and I'll send you a Simple Little Life t-shirt. Okay, let's take a look at some bench vices. All right, so this is my main work vise, my main go-to, and um, this isn't the highest quality vise, but a few things that I would consider uh, when you're purchasing a vise, one is you want it to be of decent quality, and I wouldn't necessarily say the best quality, I mean, obviously that is ideal, but a really high quality vise is incredibly expensive. Uh, if you're talking about things like Record or Wilmont or Snap-on, I mean, those are really, really hefty price tags, and in where I live in Canada, some of these high-end vices are five, six hundred dollars, so they can be really, really pricey, and I don't necessarily think you need to get into something like that when you're just starting out. At the same time, don't buy a vice from the dollar store. That's that's just a bad idea, but this is something uh, they call the Shop Iron, and I actually never had heard of this brand, but after having looked at it for a little bit, I thought, sure, it can't be that bad for what I need it for. Now, I do have some other vices, some record vices that I have in storage, and probably need to get those out, but real quickly, a few features that I really like about this vice, and one of the reasons I wanted to give this one a shot. Uh, first and foremost, in my opinion, one of the most important things about a bench vise um, is just that it has the swivel capacity. So I can loosen off these tabs here and uh, with this one I don't, I don't like the way it's designed. I think there's a uh, type of a gearing system in there or like notches that it has to rest in. So you really have to loosen these off quite a bit. You can't just loosen them and turn. You actually have to unthread them quite a bit. But this vise swivels 360 degrees, which is a really, really nice feature. Um, it just allows you so many different options. Sometimes if you're working with a longer piece or you know you want to adjust something for to make it easier to work on, a uh, really nice feature. And I would consider that that's uh, 
In my opinion, one of the necessary features for any vise I would consider. I don't think I would actually ever go buy a vise that is fixed. Um, one other thing that's adjustable on this vise, and probably one of the reasons why I was really attracted to it, is that this actually swivels uh, this way. So. You can, uh, it allows you to use uh, this bottom portion, what would normally be the bottom portion for things like pipe. It's got very different teeth and clamping abilities in here. And then also just for holding things at certain angles. Again, if you have a really long piece and you need it to rest on the floor on one end, you can still get a really good bite on it with this. So really, really handy vise. I quite enjoy this one. And um, also, you'll notice I have a set of soft jaws on this vise. Now, uh, this is a one style. These are just some type of a polymer or a, a rubbery type plastic stuff. Uh, they've got magnets embedded in them and that just holds them in place and uh, they just protect your work surfaces. Now I won't clamp a blade of a finished knife in here but when I wrap it once or twice in a rag and then use this I don't worry at all about it marring the blade and uh, obviously a lot better than the actual jaws of the blade. Way less damage to stuff when you're using these. And then this is simply another style of uh, soft jaws they call these. Um, these ones are made by record. Uh, this is some type of almost like a Bakelite or something like that but you can also get them out of aluminum or make your own out of sheet aluminum which will protect in uh, certain situations um, you know with certain materials if you've got hard materials that won't scratch it. Um, aluminum can get impregnated with stuff I guess these things can too but uh, yeah aluminum copper I've seen guys make them out of brass all sorts of different things so that's one thing to consider too an accessory. Uh, these were like nine dollars for the set and you know it's very, very well worth it and just allows you to do a little bit more delicate work uh, in your vise while still maintaining a decent grip on it. And then again, one thing to consider when you're buying a vise is whether or not you'd like the anvil capacity or not. So this here is what they call an anvil. Um, in theory, it's a place where you can beat on things and I do use it uh, mostly just for center punching stuff though. I uh, don't think this is something like, hey, I can grab this and you know heat up some metal and I can start blacksmithing on here. I really don't think these would take it because I mean, this is a hollow piece of steel, has to have room for this, uh, this to the shaft to run through so light banging and, and marking center holes and stuff I'm sure it's totally fine on this but as an anvil from like something you're gonna really bang on metal hard I don't think this is actually what it's meant for but that's one thing to consider and then obviously the size the capacity for what size you need uh, this side is definitely large enough for anything I've ever had to do in knife making um, I haven't actually measured the overall width but what do you say that's probably six seven inches I would say uh, six inches so really a handy vise fairly well built and this feature that it swivels all the way around was one that really really interested me uh, especially when I clamp my uh, portable bandsaw in here uh, I've made some markings just with sharpie where I want it lined up and I can actually lock this so that it uh, it won't move and that's the angle that I like to clamp my portable bandsaw on and it allows me to clamp the entire handle while still here just let me show you so I can clamp this handle lengthwise and get a full bite of the jaw on there and maintain level with the uh, the work surface. So if I had a, a vise that wasn't adjustable in this way, it was just like this, I would only be biting on a small portion of it, like right here, or if I want the whole thing, now all of a sudden my blade is skewed. So that's one thing to consider too. Uh, the adjustment and the, uh, the variability in this axis is actually quite handy as well. So this is another type of vise I use quite often in my shop and I don't really know what the exact trade name is, not trade name, but the proper terminology for these types of vices are, but typically they're more of a woodworker style vise. Uh, this is an underbent bench mount so uh, the guts of it kind of mount to the bottom of your bench and if you set it up properly this vise will stay flush with the top. Uh, that's kind of nice because then you know you can still work off of this surface if you've got lar large objects hanging over it's not going to affect that it's not going to interfere and then you can also put dogs in here and actually use this so say if you had something fixed on this end you can actually use some dogs or screws hold something there put some dogs sticking out of here and then actually clamp here and kind of integrate the table as part of the clamp. That's one of the features about these vices it's pretty nice. What I use it for uh, very often um, is holding my Kydex press. So what I'll do is I'll simply clamp my Kydex press in here and I like this because it still leaves me the whole uh, table surface to work off of and store my Kydex fasteners and parts and there's clearance underneath here where I can get C-clamps on here so after I put the knife in here the hot Kydex I need to press it I'll put it in here clamp it down and I can let it dry I really really like using this in this configuration 
And then one other thing that a viewer had suggested and uh, really appreciate the tip. Like I say, that's one of the huge benefits about YouTube is that I learned so much from you guys. So one of the viewers has suggested that you can mount a, another vise, like a regular benchtop vise to some wood and just have that ready to clamp in at any time. So what I've done is I just screwed a piece of two by six to a four by four. Uh, the reason for that is so it always gives me something lip just to kind of rest on there while I clamp it down. And uh, I've just got another small swivel vise. And uh, this is where I do all my glue up of my handle scales, uh, pretty much strictly with this vise. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's all kinds of epoxy dripped all over the place. So I really don't plan on this vise being used for anything else, but this is where I clamp my knives in when I'm gluing up the epoxy scales. And one really nice thing about these vices as well is that they have a very large capacity between the jaws. Uh, you can see that's quite significant. Let's see, what is this one? So this one's 12 inches. That's pretty good, that's pretty handy. And um, again, it's got this quick release on the threads. It just disengages the threads so I can make these adjustments quickly. And then once I pull, once that's released, now I can use this the threads and, and do my final adjustments or lock it up. And this one is a little bit stiff because I got this at a garage sale and I paid 20 bucks for it, which is a pretty good deal. And a year ago, I probably would not have recommended this vise as being overly useful in a shop. But now that I have one and I kind of just threw it up here because I'm like, ah, whatever. Um, man, this is a vise that I really wish I'd purchased sooner. Uh, now that I have one, I notice them all the time with the, the different tool flyers I get and stuff like that. But a lot of different ways you can use this vise and it has become a, uh, a tool in the shop that I use probably five to eight times a week. So really, really happy with this vise. And uh, this is one that you could consider getting as well. And then kind of getting out of the realm of traditional bench top vices, uh, you get things like this. This is a, uh, a drill press or uh, a milling machine vise. Uh, it's got holes meant to be mounted to the, the carriage the, of the uh, whatever machine you'd like it on. And you know, this is getting a little bit more specialized, but at the same time, super useful tool. You use these things all the time. Uh, this one has some adjustability with the angle that it'll hold your piece at, uh, lock it down. And uh, these ones typically do not provide a huge amount of clamping force just due to the style of threads. Uh, but enough to hold the workpiece when you're drilling or machining or whatever. And I use this one constantly on the milling machine. It's so much faster than trying to bolt stuff down. Uh, so keep your eye open for these too, especially when you're bargain hunting. If you're looking at garage sales and stuff like that, a lot of times you can find some really odd looking vices. I just buy them, just grab them up. Doesn't matter what size they are. Sometimes you're just amazed at what you'll find uses for and how handy that tool will become for you. And again, this is just another type of a machinist device, a precision machinist device. Um, some of the vices, especially the machinist ones, will have uh, wrenches that come on and off. And uh, again, if you find these at garage sales, grab them. You'll find uses for them. This one also is angle adjustable, but it's not got a quick release mechanism. You actually unloosen these bolts and then you can swivel it however you'd like to whatever angle you'd like to hold your workpiece at. I don't use this vice a whole lot, but you know what? There are times when this is exactly what I need and it helps me out. And one other vice that I actually use a lot is this piece of junk vice that somebody at work was throwing in the garbage. Uh, I mounted it on a stand, which is just a metal car wheel. Uh, well, that's some tubing to it and a plate to the top, bolted it on there. And I just give this thing a WD-40 bath once a month or so. And a lot of times if you have tasks, like you're doing a lot of really heavy grinding or cutting with a torch and you don't want all that mess in your shop, I just take it out here and use this junky vice. So if you ever see these at garage sales, often you can get them for like one or two dollars, literally. Uh, snatch them up. They make great vices to use outside. All right guys, so there's another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. A quick look at bench vices. Again, uh, to truly cover the topic in depth, we would have to produce a several hour long video, but I just kind of want to give you a few things to think about and some things to consider. If you don't have a bench vise, first of all, probably get one. And second of all, when you're looking for one, what to think about. First and foremost, the size that you're gonna need and make sure it's got the capacity to hold the work that you'll be working on. Uh, the second one, make sure you buy a half decent quality vise. Again, the, the really high end ones are really expensive, but try to get something reputable, not from the dollar store. I bought a really cheap vise one time and I was going to pull on something and it just shattered. It can be dangerous and it's just frustrating as well. So buy something that's half decent quality and 
And third thing to consider when you're buying a vise or looking to buy a vise, remember that you don't have to buy new. Very often garage sales are great places to find vices, uh, flea markets, pawn shops, and sometimes even scrap metal yards will set aside vices as they can find them or catch them before they go to be destroyed. And quite often you can pick them up for the, the cost of the weight and steel. So you don't always have to pay a lot of money for a really good quality vice. And it's a tool that you will constantly use and you'll be so glad that you have one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching Tool Time Tuesday. Cheers. Thank you.